world is full of strange people doing strange things, but also, and you're familiar with the dog box, I guess, but also it's full of this kind of, uh, uh, there is another language used. It's like the language of the internet in 2003, I can, uh, in uh, 93, I can clearly recall. It's really, uh, there See, is I, I, have, I have something there that is, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the idea of the net art. Not so much. Well, 90s, late 90s and early 2000. Um, for me, net art was dead because many of them, I mean, many of the first ones, they really voluntarily stopped. Um, some, but some got net art as uh, graphic design with Flash and websites done with Flash. But now I say that net art, if net art is to be alive today, it can only be inside the hidden services. That's kind of my <laughs> position because he has the latency of those years lower. and the statics and the reason to experiment with some technology and the reason to have our own kind of uh, free network. So this is something we discussed. It's, it's so, this is a pretty sociological aspect. The internet became a place in which everyone more or less speaks with his or her name. I mean, nowadays, even on, on because of fighting spam, we have comments, and the comments are linked to your Facebook account, LinkedIn, suddenly all your friends know what you're writing on some website. This will change the way you will write, because you're, you, you will uh, even uh, not notice, but you're uh, aware that you're speaking in public. On, on hidden services, you find back the kind of chat that is maybe 4chan still has that. Uh. <laughs> To give you an idea, but really, you know, that you can speak freely, which uh, has an aesthetic of it. Yeah, so, I mean, Tor Hidden Services basically are uh, anonymity for the server. So it allows you to offer um, a website, yes, but also an instant messaging server or any kind of, uh, of service that uh, uh, runs on TCP, which is uh, the protocol that is used uh, by. Um, most services that uh, require to have uh, reliable delivery of, of packets. So, for example, video streaming would be somewhat complicated to do over Tor Hidden Services. Um, but so, what a Tor Hidden Service address looks like is, is this string here. So, it's um, an 80-bit um, um, you know, string, basically, encoded in base uh, uh, 32. Uh, so it looks like this. Um, and, and to access a .onion address, you need to remember that and put it inside of your browser or the kind of client that you're using to uh, connect to uh, whatever service you're interested in connecting. Um, and so how, how they, they actually work is, is, is quite interesting, I think. So, um, and, and this will give you an idea of, of why it has anonymity properties and, and uh, uh, and, and how it is possible that uh, that you're able to, um, to to do this even without um, opening ports and being just a client. So uh, here we have Bob, which uh, is interested in 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 you know ac giving access to uh, a hidden service which has the address foobar.onion. Um, it would actually be something longer than foobar.onion, but uh, uh, this is more easy to, to talk about them. Um, and so Bob is connected to a set of what are called introductory points. And these introductory points are um, any relay that is part of the Tor network. So the Tor network is this network that is run by volunteers that uh, donate their, their machines and their hardware to the Tor network. And currently there are um, more than 2,500 uh, uh, relays all over the world um, that run uh, the Tor server software and, uh, and so Bob chooses three of these at random and connects to them through what is called a Tor circuit which is um, three hops on other three Tor relays. So here we see an arrow but in reality what there is between Bob and the introductory point are one, two, three hops, and then the introductory point. Uh, Alice, that is interested in connecting to uh, Fubar Daranian, that is run by Bob, but she does not know that, um, asks what is the Tor um, 
hidden service directory authority, which is basically a database uh, of all of the, um, well, of part of the hidden services. They are, they are actually not stored all inside <coughs> of one database, but um, it uses, um, it, it uses a, what is called a hash ring, which means that they are, they are split across different um, databases so that there is not one unique list that contains all of the hidden services that are accessible. And so Alice asked the um, hidden service director authority, ah, can you please tell me uh, where I could find foobar.onion? Um, and at that point, the directory authority responds with the public key of the hidden service of Bob. And a public key is, um, is something that um, allows you to it, it, it implements what is called public-private key cryptography, which means that um, you are able to encrypt a message that is only readable by the, the, the target destination um, by using a key that you can know. So there is, there is a pair, a public key pair, a public key and a private key. The public key is used to encrypt the message for the recipient, and the private key is used for decrypting it. So, um, what Bob, what Alice gets back from the directory is this key that allows them to then encrypt the messages towards to to Bob, uh, and and this this key is validated against foobar.onion, which is um, a hash of the key fingerprint. Um, so. Uh, what this means is that usually when you, when you visit a website, uh, you are trusting certificate authorities to tell you that that website um, is actually the website that you're visiting, in the case of encrypted websites like HTTPS. So when, when you visit HTTPS Google.com, there is some certificate authority that says, yes, the fingerprint of, of, uh, of this site that you're visiting, Google.com, is, is correct. Um, because I have signed it. In, in the case of Tor Hidden Services, um, the address that you place there is self-authenticating in the sense that by entering it, it inside of your, your browser or your client, you are verifying that who you are speaking to is in fact who you are supposed to be speaking to. Um, and this, this I think is, is a quite interesting solution to the, the whole problem of, of having uh, um, you know, s uh, either federated systems where you have um, m uh, root certificate authorities that then, uh, um, or, or, or various different nodes that then sign sub certificates, um, or this. this l let me not digress, but it, it is it, it is it is an interesting solution to the problem because it allows you to not have to trust somebody, but just trust the fact that you're entering this address there. So anyways, Bob connect, uh, Alice connects to the director authority. They get back this list of introductory points and they verify that the fingerprint is correct. At that point, they pick what is called a rendezvous point, a point in which they shall meet inside of the network. Um, at that point, since they know which introductory points Bob is connected to, they are able to communicate to that introductory point, let's meet over here. And at that point, uh, Bob connects to the rendezvous point, and Alice connects to the rendezvous point, and they are able to finally communicate. Um, as you can imagine, these are all three hops, so the latency that is present on these links is, is something that is quite important. Um, however, the, the throughput, as in the, the amount of data that you can transmit, is, is still something uh, um, that, that, is, that I believe is acceptable. Um, but so, what, what, what are the sort of features that you, you get from Tor Hidden Services and why you would be interested in using them? Um, well, it gives you end-to-end -end encryption without having to rely on the certificate authority mafia. So you don't have to pay for a, 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 an SSL certificate that is valid. Um, you don't have to pay for a domain name. Um, and, and you can have good security properties. Um, it is self-authenticating. Uh, which is uh, that that property that we described previously, and and also another thing that is that is quite underused are stealth hidden services, uh, which allow you to um, 
basically have a tour hidden service that unless you provide also a key to the tour hidden service, its existence is not known even to the tour directory authorities. So I can, I can distribute a set of keys to, to people that I trust and only them will be able to connect to my tour hidden service. And if somebody tries to do a lookup on that domain name, because for example it got leaked somewhere and somebody um, sees foobar.onion and they try to connect to it, it comes out as non-existent because it, it requires uh, such key to be able to look it up. Um, and another thing that is, is quite interesting to note is that um, Tor hidden services obviously <coughs> require you to have Tor to be able to access them normally. Uh, so this is, this is somewhat a limitation if, if you have a blog and you want normal people to be able to read it and access it. Uh, however, through tor to web you're able to expose a Tor hidden service to the normal internet. So where, whereas you would usually type xxx.onion, you can type xxx.tor2web.org and be able to access that hidden service. Um, this obviously has the, uh, the effect that the anonymity property for the client gets lost. So the person that is visiting uh, that domain name over tor 2 web are leaking the fact that they are visiting such site to the people that run tor 2 weborg um, and and that is that is that is a trade-off between usability and, and anonymity uh, and it still does provide though anonymity for the server so people can host their, their website um, and make sure that its impact is maximized because normal normal users are then able to, to run it and I actually wanted to do a demo of setting one up um, but yeah, if you want to, while you do it, I can... Yeah, can I, can I, can I set one up on, on this machine here? Yeah, okay, that's good. It's fairly easy to set one up. It's like setting up a website, HTML pages served from a HTTP, Apache, or a yeah. Jinx. Uh, so setting up a website, and between the website yeah. and the people, you put this little software that anonymizes the way it's served. Hmm. And... Um, so far, not so many people did it. That's the, the thing. The people, uh, also interesting social uh, observation, the people that usually uh, get closer to this technology are the people already on the margins doing, uh, uh, let's say, liminal things. So um, the way uh, this, this kind of service, this kind of software was presented on the media so far was very negative, actually because uh, uh, hidden services were used by the uh, famous Silk Road to sell drugs online. You could order MDMA, LSD, uh, marijuana, and since most uh, uh, older people especially are, are prohibitionists, uh, this ended up being a big argument against. Uh, there is also a guy that ran an assassination network on, on, on Tor, so you could pay uh, something like uh, 500 bitcoins to kill someone and, uh, and, and he would conduct professional killers to actually do the job. This was uh, uh, mostly a myth. By now we understood Sorry. that the assassination network was a prank. Uh, not because someone tried. Yeah, that's a funny it. question. Uh, it's, uh, it was a prank, as far as I know, from, from someone, some funny guy in the UK. Uh, <clears throat> so you still have to go to your old providers. If you <laughs> <laughs> There's no innovation there. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, other things that were done uh, this way, but slowly it's growing as an interesting place. There are. Uh, there is the usual collection, the Tor library has the usual typical collection of anarchist cookbooks that they developed uh, through the years, how to build uh, your atomic bomb and stuff like that. And uh, slowly, I mean, there was an, in, uh, there was an interesting uh, place that was like anonymous Twitter, Identica, was used, which was uh, fairly uh, interesting, that one. People really wrote a lot. There is a, uh, there is a, a BBS uh, bulletin board system. There are several forums for anonymous uh, organizers, anonymous peers, uh, like from the anonymous movements around the world. And 
I, and, and you can think of anything. I mean, as censorship goes on, there are more things that are worth putting on the hidden network rather than on, on a website. So the only thing I don't recommend, as you have seen probably on the bookmarks, there is the Tor mail anonymizer. I don't recommend it. Don't use it, it's not stable, it's not really anonymous. It's easy to use if you have a hidden service, so you create your mail account, it's like Gmail, but don't rely on it for anonymous email because it's not as leaked, a lot of data on the usage, and uh, it, it is not uh, a reliable mail. If you need it's probably run by the Russian Secret Service. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, run by the, yes. <laughs> the KGB, zero, whatever, uh, your conspiracy theory, uh, think the worst. <laughs> and um, if you need to anonymize emails, uh, Mixmaster is still the option, is still the best option, the last uh, version of Mixmaster. So, Mixmaster, yes, it's the old, uh, uh, it's the old uh, software, um, written by several people in the last uh, 15 years. It reached uh, 3.0 uh, two years ago. Unfortunately, the, the coder, the programmer that took care of it, uh, uh, Lev Sassaman uh, died, left us. So it's left us maintained now. But it still works. There are several nodes around the world, and it's fairly uh, 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 PIPA uh, for uh, FBI and CIA. PIPA stands for Penny Diaz. <laughs> and because, I mean, for instance, FBI raided the last the servers that they raided with yes. Mixmaster, what was it? Like a year ago, they raided Mixmaster servers. The well, they, servers. They raided one recently in November in, uh, in New York. Yeah. November, so if you yeah. see an FBI raid of computers because of uh, running uh, a software, Always ask yourself which software was running there. It means that the software was good enough in anonymity that they needed to raid the servers. But so but the purpose is the point is that they won't get anything no, from it. No. That's that's the the retarded thing that that it, they they will raid this machine and they will find nothing, and and so it's just a waste of time for everybody. And well, what they got in that case is a couple of web servers being offline for a day. But also a lot of people is not trusting as they were trusting guys up and that's very sad in the sense of the psychological effect. Because people tend to think, oh, hmm, I was not secure. Or people think, oh, you have an address that rise up, you must be an FBI terrorist. So, so there are actually two ways to, to, to configure a Torridon service and I was so one way is either the sort of manual way, which involves editing a config file for Tor. Um, so what, what, what you, you specify are basically these two lines. One is the hidden service steer, which um, you need to point it to a directory where, um, where Tor will store uh, your host name, which is the .onion address, and your Tor hidden service private key. Uh, so. And, and Tor will take care of generating this, this directory automatically, but the, the previous, um, the previous, does it? I don't know, we will figure, we will find that out. But definitely the, the directories that contain it should, uh, should, should be already uh, created. And the permissions on this directory are, is very important that are set um, to, to those which, under which the user of Tor will be running which in the case of Ubuntu is Debian-Tor. Um, and, and basically, only the user, it, it, it must not be world readable. Like, not everybody should be able to access this directory because if they are able to access it, they will be able to steal the private key of the Tor hidden service uh, and, and be able to impersonate it, which that is bad. Um, and so here you, you specify like a path. Uh, which we will set to, in this case, uh, um, for in service. So, copy this. 
that. And then here, what we tell it is um, hidden service port is the port that will be exposed through the dot onion through through the Tor network. So in this case, I can put port 80, which means HTTP. So uh, if I want to host a website, for example, uh, that's the right port. If if I want to run, I don't know, an IRC server, for example, I will put uh, 6667, uh, or th this this is basically the port um, that that will be exposed over the Tor network. And over here, what we have is the port that is exposed locally on the machine. And in this case, for the example, I'll put port 8080. So my the the web server that will be running here will be bound to port 8080 on uh, on on this machine here. Um, so it, it will not be internet exposed. It will only be listening on localhost. Yeah, but I'm not sure it would work because of <laughs> the network here. Because I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi right now, so... It, it will work. Okay, because okay, okay. if Tor is able to exit, it will work. Okay, okay. That's... that's uh, th this, this is only on localhost. So this is bound locally on this machine. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, but yes, we, we, we will see if it will work. Um, so at this point, I can start Tor with minus F, Tor RC. Okay. Uh, and we have already Tor running, so we need to tell uh, it to use a different SOX port. This, this, this should not. If if you don't have already another Tor, yeah, this color scheme is is, is pretty <laughs> awful. Uh, shit. Profile preferences. This thing. Colors. Quello di BI. No, ma dov dovrebbe cambiarlo. Sì, così. Ah, this is better. Ah, this is much better. Yes, now we, we can actually read what it, it's happening. So, th this this should should not be necessary, but it's necessary because another instance of Tor is already running. So I need to tell it to listen on a different SOX port, uh, which is the port that the um, any application that is interested in using Tor will use. So then I do this, and Tor will start. Um, and now we need to start a web server. So um, what web server do you, do you have some, some web server that, that I can use here, already configured? Or do you have an idea of an easy to set up web server? Uh, I would use Twisted, but... Uh, uh, I no, 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 no. Uh, okay, can, 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 can you? Yeah. Or if, well, or if you have an idea of, 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 of a simple uh, web server. Yeah, that's 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 the one that I twisted. You can do twisted d dash dash static the web dash dash static, and you point it to a directory, and uh, and it will. So we'll we'll uh, we'll install this thing. Yeah, can, can you can you put yeah, so, so this this actually can be an arbitrary web server. Like in this case, we're we're using Python Twisted. But if if you uh, wish to to have another, um, I think. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, no. I just need to figure out the layout. Ah, the layout has changed. Uh, but Shit. I, I can, you I can, can switch it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Marvelous. Uh, perfect. So we need uh, definitely another another social node. We definitely need this software. This infrastructure to spread more among the activists, people that need it for political reasons. Because so far has been extremely popular with the Russian mafia, <laughs> all kinds of drug trafficking, money washing people used it. It was like a big traffic of drugs, uh, uh, apparently from the Silk Road. And this is, uh, you know, uh, surprising to see, but still not so encouraging, you know, 
to, to keep on uh, uh, developing forever if, uh, if we don't see some use that we can relate to. And many times there are activists and for, uh, censored for political reasons that need to communicate uh, uh, anonymously, so that's what we would like to, to see used. Uh, having the media websites served through hidden uh, service, for instance, or um, things like this. And uh, there is also a chat service that we run. Uh, we have a server uh, that runs a chat service over Tor hidden service, which is kinedumi.im. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that, that's good stuff. We need more of these things. Yeah. But definitely. Anyway, no, I was filling in the time. Yes. So so here we started um, <coughs> this 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 um, web server with Twisted. Um, so this this basically says start a web server uh, and serve the content of the directory test site and listen on port eighty eighty. So if I connect, uh, and, and I created inside of this directory uh, this index file. Uh, however, I can also remove the index file and like, um, I don't know. Can I look in your pictures folder for some pictures? Uh, I don't think I have any. Are there some, some, some forms <laughs> bigs or something? <laughs> you know, but uh, in fact, I, I just created a, a brand new Profile, so there's nothing in it. Oh, um, it, it, there isn't there like some default ah. stuff inside mm -hmm. of this um, thing? Maybe, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I got this, I got, I got one JPEG that I used for the, it might be on the, on the desktop. It should be on, it should this one? No, uh, no. Or I guess we can just create some files, like, yeah. um, uh, no, so okay. It was just to show that it it, it, it like if I connect to it, it lists the files that are in inside of this directory. Uh, but this is listening on localhost, so this is not particularly interesting. However, this is actually running as a Tor hidden service. What this means is that if I start the Tor browser bundle, well, first let's see what the hidden service address of this is. So Tor hidden service, host name, voila, this thing here. So if I put this, yes, inside of Tor to web, suck dot tor to web dot org. Oh. A comp appears. What the fuck? That's that's very strange. <laughs> No, no, I, I don't, why, why am I getting an invalid certificate? <coughs> That's very strange. Because he didn't say no? He didn't say the certificate of Dr. Ward, he never did it to you. Yeah, I know, but I mean it should be inside of the certificate store of Ubuntu. Really? Yeah, it should be. I mean, it, it's not a self-signed certificate. We have like a proper certificate authority for it. <coughs> issued on 12.05.2011. Hmm. Hmm. So potentially, I mean, being taught to web a gateway for anonymous websites, potentially, I mean, the paranoia that Arturo is making is that uh, uh, between us and Talk to Web, there is someone hijacking with a typical man in the middle. Or, or also, because, so Tor to Web runs as a distributed uh, network of, of nodes. So we have currently um, four nodes that, that, are, that are running Tor to Web .org, um, and one node that is running Tor to Web dot or, uh, Tor to Web software under a different uh, host name. Um, so what this could also be is that one of these four people is is serving some some rogue certificate. And what um, you should do in these cases for verifying every website is that very nasty SHA fingerprint and MD5 fingerprint. You should have it written somewhere and yeah. uh, 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 check it. 
Well, we'll 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 assume that that this is this is some Ubuntu wrongness going on. Um, however, that that should usually not happen. And if you do see this, you should you should actually some verification over what is going on on your network. Um, so, yes, this this now is uh, um, is the website that we are hosting on this laptop and is accessible from the internet. So we, we are now posting these files from this machine behind a firewall that denies, you know, all sorts of ports uh, and, and we're running it from this laptop. And yeah, that's, that's pretty good stuff. Okay. Um, how, did, okay. how can you change the domain name uh, easily? <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the point of uh, yeah. of of hidden services that you cannot uh, yeah, true. Yeah, okay. that but that the domain is self authenticating. Mm. But then we can we could use a simple tiny URL or something like this to to make it uh, pages. Yes, mm. but you would you would be losing the anonymity properties of the, uh, I mean uh, the the self authentication property. I mean in the case of Tortu Web it would make sense. Yes. I mean this 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 final address. You could just digest it in, inside the address uh, shortener. Yeah. Yes. It means that you give to the address shortener the log, longer. the log of all those that visit your top web website. Mm, yeah. So every yeah, time yeah. you do a step like this, you give uh, more people the data about who is connecting to your hidden service, which can be a, a very nasty hidden service, or you know, like you could have. Now, how but anonymous is this thing? Yeah. Uh, how anonymous is anything? The, the main problem for anonymity is usually uh, resumed in uh, PB uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 AC problem between keyboard and chair. The, the technical <laughs> term. I mean, the, to, to be anonymous, uh, the best thing that you have to do is work on your own behavior, also for keeping uh, data confidential. That is always the, the flaw. And uh, Tor was used, hidden service was used by the um, uh, Silk Road to sell drugs. In the arc of two years, FBI arrested four or five people uh, 